right, so let's take a look at how to use Unity's new post effects system inside of our tank controller scene. All right, so let's jump over into Unity and take a look. Okay, so in order for this to work, make sure that you go up to the window package manager. And if you don't already have the post processing package installed, simply go to the all tab and scroll down until you see the post processing package right here and just say install. All right, so I've already got it installed. All right, so I would go ahead and do that and then, you know, just continue with the video. So in order to make this work um, in 2018, Unity 2018, uh, the first thing that I usually do at least is I go to the camera, okay? And I go and add a post process layer component to it, okay? And so what this post process layer does is it's basically, um, what triggers the new volumes that um, are in the um, post-processing system, okay? And um, what we need to do is we need to actually set everything that controls the post-processing effects. We need to set the layer. So um, you can see inside of Unity, if you go to the layers, it has the post-processing layer, all right? And I'm going to go ahead and turn on the fast approximate anti-aliasing, okay? All right, so I've also gone in and I've set the project settings inside of the player to be in the linear color space. All right, that way we can take full advantage of all the post effects. All right, so I'll go and do that now. It takes a little bit, you know, if you set it from gamma to linear, it, it will have to re-import some of the textures and, you know, adjust their color spaces and stuff like that. Okay, cool. So once you have all that set up, uh, the next step is to go in and what I'm going to do at least uh, or what I've started doing is I go and create an empty object and I just call this my post volumes group. Okay. And this is basically where I keep all my volumes. All right. So inside of there, I'm going to create another empty game object and just call this the global uh, volume because you're always going to have that one global volume for your levels. You know, the nice thing about volumes is that you can move in and out of different uh, volumes here and have different effects trigger as the camera moves in and out of the volumes. All right, but we, also, we always need that one global because that's what is going to be over, overridden, okay? So on that global volume over here, I'm going to say add component, and we're going to add a post-process volume like so, okay? And I'm going to make sure that it's set to the is global property there, okay? And with that, we basically have the basic structure, all right? So the way it works is we have the post-process layer on the camera, okay? And then we create the volume, the global volume, all right? And then what we need to do is we need to create a profile. So if you've saved the scene already, all right, by hitting this new button right here, what will happen is it will create a new profile for you. And it puts it, if we just click on this right there, it puts it into the scene right next to the scene file. All right, so it's pretty cool. So once you have that, we can start to add post effects. All right, it's pretty easy. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I always start with the ambient occlusion here. And you'll notice now that the effects aren't on by default anymore. Okay, so what I want to do is update the mode intensity. And I want to set my mode to the scalable ambient occlusion. Turn on my radius, and I'm just going to increase um, all this. Now, the one thing, the reason why we're not seeing any uh, post effects yet is because I didn't set the global volume to the post processing layer. And there we go. So now you can see it kind of did a little uh, twitch there. So what I can do now is increase my mode and my radius or my intensity and radius. There we go. So now we're starting to get some ambient occlusion. Cool. I'm going to turn off my, my grid as well. There we go. All right. So I'm going to go then and add in my bloom. Now in this case, you know, there's not a lot of bloom, but I'm just going to put it in there for completeness. There we go. So you can see we're going to start to bloom this out, but I don't want to get it too dreamy looking. Okay. Then I'm going to go and add my color grading. Uh, I always like to do this and um, I always like to set it to the aces mode and then adjust my post exposure. So just pull that up a little bit and I'm going to, you know, set the contrast or not, not the contrast, the saturation here. Maybe a little bit of hue shift. It's a little bit too much. All right. Then I always mess around with my gamma lift and gain. Uh, and this just allows me to kind of color it. And then I also use these little sliders until I get something that I you know, really like. There we go. 
Just start to tint it with these colors just a little bit. There we go. That's pretty cool. Awesome. Okay, so with that, we're good. And then what I'm going to do is put in the vignette, and uh, I'll call it good. Now, I'll let you guys go and play around with all these other different effects there. So uh, I'm just going to play around with the intensity and smoothness here. So just pull up the, the intensity there, and voila. Looks cool. It's probably a little bit too much color for my taste. Um, there we go. Just that was too much gamma there, maybe. There we go. Something like that. Pretty cool. All right. All right, so let's uh, hit play one more time and adjust the camera. I think I had the camera a little bit too high there. All right, yeah, the camera is a little bit too high. So remember, we can use the the editor tools that we created here. This makes it a lot easier instead of having to go and mess around with these values over here. Not that that's hard. <laughs> uh, all right, I always just you know try to make tools for myself just to make it more interactive and um, more fun to play around with uh, all my systems. Pretty cool. There we go. So. You know, like I said before, uh, I'm thinking about doing a whole uh, set of series, I guess is how you would say it. Um, you know, just kind of build upon this little tiny uh, tank here. Maybe do some weapon stuff, um, get into a level. I would love to show off, you know, making a level with uh, Pro Builder. It's super powerful, and I love all the you know features that it comes with these days. Uh, I mean, I use it quite a bit to manipulate geometry inside of Unity. So that way I'm not bouncing back and forth between uh, Houdini or Maya or any DCC package. So there we go. We have a nice little controller, tank controller that, you know, would be perfect for just about any game. I also want to go and set this to something more, you know, isometric there. So let's really change the height now and our distance. So let's just pull this guy up even more. There we go. That feels more like a top-down game. Let's give it some more distance. There we go. That feels better. Cool. All right. So I'm going to leave you guys there. Thanks so much for watching and definitely let me know if you guys have any questions. All right. I'll see you guys in the next series. Thanks so much.